We're on a new site today. And what's happening with the patio is it's settling in some areas, especially along the wall here. You can see. So we gotta fix that. So what we're doing is peeling it back to where it's back to about the normal site. Bringing our sand and probably some class five in along here because it sunk so bad. Bringing it all back up and putting it back together. It's like a big, it's like puzzle. A big puzzle. So in theory, that will work, but in practicality, what Sam and the crew are going to find out is that a lot of times, theory doesn't work in real life. So right here, you can see them very carefully peeling apart the patio the same way that it went together. In small sections and small repairs, that works amazing, that's fine. But when you get into bigger areas like we have right here, it's not going to work for a reason that they're going to discover in just a few moments. Actually, let's skip forward to that right now. So this whole end of this patio was sunk to right up about here. So what we did, this patio is kind of a, it's a goofy shape. There's a decent amount of cuts in it. Um, it's a random pattern, but what we did here was peel everything up and slide it directly back so that the pattern's the same, all the blocks are gonna go back in the same place. So once we get the grade fixed and all that along here, we can take all of these and just essentially slide them all back and it'll go together all nice and neat. So you can really kind of see the, there's a pretty good V going on through here where the water was just sitting through here. We got some random low spots through here too that we gotta fix. So there's a dip in here. But some some spots that definitely settled pretty good, but overall it's not not too bad. Okay, so what's going on is Sam and the crew are gonna find out that he's almost he's actually by isolating that area and attempting to repair it, he's creating two different planes. So the patio has noticeable, noticeably sunk in that area, and the patio comes down this way. By having this sharp line of repair work, he's gonna have two patio, two planes in the patio, and that's not going to work. And what he's doing right here works out fine. They are, they've removed the block, they've put brand new class five in, place that and compact that. Now you might be, you might be tempted to just fill it all up with sand and that's the worst thing you can do. You only want one inch of sand. When you get over an inch of sand, your individual pavers will tip. When you put pressure on them, they'll tip. So they've removed the sand, they put new class so five in. All this washed out. And prepping so it sand. All this washed out along the front of the wall. It was like a, it was like a V, essentially. Like going up that way. Um, so what we had to do was blend new class five into the existing uh, class five. So it started out about two, three inches and faded into nothing. So you just put the pipes down. This is the this is the height right here that all of the the patio is gonna have to sit at because these ones here are sitting on the stairs. All right, let's pause it right there. Right there, you can see the class five is a titch low, and that's to leave enough room for sand. If you look at this area, you can see where the class five doesn't reach to the top of the block, and it's not very much sand we put in. The sand is literally just enough to level the blocks. It's not base material that you wanna fill all the way up. It's just leveling material. The patio's gonna have to sit at because these ones here sitting on the stairs. Okay, so what happened now is they noticed that they couldn't just do the repair because it was just too uneven between the two. So they ended up peeling a larger section of the patio back than what was isolated or what was needed just in the repair zone. And they had to almost triple the area that they needed to do the repair work in because they've got to blend. They've got to make this patio feel like it's all one patio and not two separate patios that have been connected together. And that's what you see them doing right here.
And now before we go too far, I want you to look on the ground next to Blaine. You're gonna see a critical piece of equipment. It's not an expensive piece of equipment. It's a pipe. If you look, that pipe is what we use as our guide for how much sand to put in. We never vary how much sand. The reason is, is it's easy if you put them on stakes and then you don't have your class five perfectly level, you may get sand that goes to an inch and a half or two inches thick. By using the pipe and just the straightest two by four that we can find, we make sure that we always have a, between a half inch to three quarters of an inch of sand. All right, so another thing to point out is that board. There's nothing really special about that board except for the fact that we've actually cut the board to notch right over the top of the pavers. So the board slides over the rail or the pipe on one side and on the other side, the board actually rests over the top of the pavers. So we're using the existing paver deck. We've got on one side, we've got the post or the pipe on the other side, and that becomes the, pave, the existing paver deck and that pipe together become our new screed rail. It's a very simple system, but it's an easy way to blend an existing patio over the top of a repair section and make sure that everything flows together really well. So you're gonna notice that we've also given up at this point on trying to duplicate that pattern exactly the way that it came out. What I'm talking about is in the beginning of this video, you notice that we had peeled apart the patio, rebuilt it, and then we were going to just reinstall it so that we had to make zero cuts. And on a small area that works, but when you start to get into these bigger areas, it becomes too time costly. And so what the guys are doing at this point is they are reusing the existing blocks. They're reusing the existing pattern, but the blocks aren't going back in in the exact same way that they came out. What this might lead to is making a few extra cuts at the very end of the job, meaning that for them to pull this off successfully, they will need, potentially need a few extra blocks to cut to be able to do that. gotta finish this paver patio up the same way we would do a brand new installation and that's by packing the top of it. By packing the top of it we've settled everything in and that also locks everything together. Now this was an old patio that got repaired and the old patio used standard joint sand. You guys can upgrade and this might be a great thing to offer your customers upgrading with polymeric sand. Polymeric sand is gonna last about one to two, possibly three years. Typical joint sand needs to be refreshed once a year, sometimes twice a year. It's so Tad found something kinda neat. This whole area here it was sinking, so we're you know gonna raise it up like the rest of it. He pulled these first two bricks out, and there is nothing under to right about here. So these whole two rows are just being supported by the friction fit of all the bricks, but. And that's a good, probably a good four inches more from the top of the block. This is probably about six to the bottom here in the front. So if you have a patio that butts right up to a retaining wall, this is very common because you're not actually supposed to compact right up behind a retaining wall. You're supposed to actually leave about three feet. And this becomes problematic when a paver patio, which needs 100% compaction, butts right up to a retaining wall. 
It's not uncommon. Also, another thing that can create problems like this is animals. They'll dig and burrow underneath the paver patio and create their own void spaces. So, but there is a way to fix and repair this. It's not the end of the world. You have to use hand compaction behind a retaining wall, meaning you still have to compact behind it because if you let that go, it's going to create problems down the road. But one of the things that you need to, to look at in this area is you seen that pipe. When they installed that swimming pool that's behind uh, the guys while they're working, whoever installed that pipe didn't compact around their pipe and that created the void spacing, which created the settlement issues, which created the patio failure when you give a mouse a cookie and so on and so forth. So we've taken the time to compact just using light hand, hand compaction equipment. We can use a basing hammer, you can use a, a packing plate. You don't want to use motorized compaction equipment behind your retaining wall because you can blow out that retaining wall and then not only are you, are you repairing a patio, you could also be potentially repairing a retaining wall at the same time. All right, so one of the beautiful things about a paver patio is the ability to repair small sections. Now, if this same patio was made out of concrete, what might have happened is it might have cracked in this area and developed this ugly spider web. And the only way to replace that is to cut the concrete out and start all over again, and you'll never color match that. With a paver patio, you can peel apart a small dip in your patio. This is where trying to remember that pattern actually works good. On small areas, it works fine. On a bigger area, it might become frustrating. But in a case like this, we're gonna break our own rule. We're not going to peel the patio apart, then peel the sand apart to get down to that base layer like we did in the larger repair zone. We can isolate the repair just to the sand area. Now, I know I said don't go over an inch of sand, but when you have a very small area, if you go an inch to maybe an inch and a quarter to possibly push it to an inch and a half, you can in a very small area. I don't recommend doing it on a very big area, but in a small zone, it'll save you from peeling the sand down, getting down to the class five, putting class five back in, then putting the sand back in place. To do that would require a much larger zone. So you can see on small patch and repair jobs, you can break your own rule, but I don't want you guys to get lazy. Here's where it happens is a lot of times guys get lazy and they'll use the same technique on a much larger area. And it's really not good because it can create the individual pavers sinking, shifting, and moving when you use too much sand base. That's why we try to stick to that rule, but we also have to weigh the cost versus time benefit of uh, using that rule on small patch and repair jobs like this one right here. I don't know if it's going to go down that far. Not that much, but we can try it. This. That one. Yeah. That works. So on small patch and repair jobs, you've seen that two by four come out. That's how we blend everything together. We want that patch to blend with the entire patio around that. And so we'll use that board to make sure that everything flows together. It's just one of our little cheats, ways that we do it. And I hope this video has helped you guys out today. Let me know what you think of it in the comments down below. That's all we've got for you today. If there's anything specific you guys want to see, like how to repair retaining walls or how to do other projects like this, let me know because I make these videos for you guys off from the feedback that you guys give me in the comments down below. Do me one last favor, you guys. Could you hit that subscribe button and the bell notification? It's up in the corner. 
and share this video if you found it useful or helpful. And that's all we've got for you today, guys. God bless and go get them. We'll see you guys on the next one. Have a good one, you guys.